the dreaded spot or the white dot. This is a follow-up to Adrian Black's recent video about the white spot that appears when you turn off the old 9-inch PET CRTs. If you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend you watch that first. I'll post a link down below in the description. As an old guy, I'm pretty used to the white spot. As a teenager, I had a small portable black and white TV that would always do this when you turned it off. This is my 1977 PET 2001 with the early version of the monitor board. And you can see this has the 3.3 microfarad cap here. I don't like to make modifications to this one, plus the fact that you can see this, uh, the board is hot glued in here. It's going to be a pain to take out. So I thought I'd try the mod first on my other pet. My other pet is something of a Frankenstein. There's a mini pet board inside. The chassis is a later 2001N type chassis with the green screen, but the monitor PCB is one of the early ones from 1978. Here's the monitor PCB, and it is pretty much identical to the one in my older pet. Uh, C22 here is 3.3 microfarads, and R5 here in the back is 1.5. I tested out this mod once already a few weeks ago, and it didn't work for me, so I went ahead and put the original components back. So I'm going to be starting over again today. And full disclosure, when I was reviewing the video that I did a few weeks ago, I realized that when I replaced C22 the last time, I put it in backwards. I put the negative side of the capacitor towards ground, which is backwards because the voltage on here is a negative voltage, so it is more negative than ground. Ground is the positive side. I'll put an insert here of what the spot looked like before I made any mods last time. And today I'm going to start out by just replacing C22 and see what that does. And if the spot's still there, I'll go ahead and replace R2. These old PCBs with the foil traces are very delicate, super easy to lift to trace, so uh, be very careful if you're going to try this yourself. There we go, C22 is replaced with a new 47 microfarad 50 volt capacitor and it's installed the correct way around. Here goes the smoke test. There's a picture. Try the brightness. All the way up. All the way down. Let it warm up for a minute. And now that the monitor's been warmed up for a while, go ahead and turn it off and see if we get a spot. Check the brightness level. Brightness is all the way down. Waiting for a delayed spot to appear. No spot. Here's a quick check after replacing C22. See what kind of voltage we're getting on the... We're getting negative 23.2 volts. Schematic says it should be negative, negative 30 volts. We're not quite getting negative 30 volts, which explains why I can't turn the brightness all the way down. So the monitor's been running for about an hour while I went and did some other stuff. I left a little test program running. Let's turn it off to see if we get a spot. There's a little spot there, but it faded quickly. Just a little one. And with the brightness turned all the way up,
the spot fades very quickly. With the brightness turned all the way down, well, with the brightness turned all the way down, I don't see a spot at all. Well, that's a pretty good result for just replacing C22. I feel like a complete bonehead for putting that capacitor in backwards last time and I want to apologize to Adrian and Frank for providing invalid testing feedback. One other important thing about this board that I probably should mention is that it's practically new. It's 40 years old of course but this came from a Commodore Service Center as a spare and it's never been used before. I've only put a couple of hours on it so far. And that may explain some of the behavior here. The 33 volt Zener hasn't had time to degrade and other components may not be as leaky if they haven't had as many hours on them. I'm going to go ahead and replace R5 with a 2.2K resistor just to protect that Zener diode. And I want to go ahead and uh, do the mod on R2 just to see if that makes any difference at all. This is a 2.2K ohm 2 watt resistor. It's a lot smaller than the uh, original. It's hard to see the markings on it because they're all red. So there's R5 replaced. And Adrian sent me a couple of these 8.2 volt Zener diodes, so it would be a shame to not at least try them here on R2 and see how it goes. And here's that resistor and Zener diode in place of R2. I only had a uh, half watt resistor around, didn't have any quarter watts. Smoke test! Okay, it's been on for a while, warm up, spot check, brightness turned all the way down, no sign of a spot, not even a quick fade, waiting for a delayed spot. Try it again with the brightness turned all the way up. Now it looks like the brightness is getting much brighter than it did before. And we get a spot with the brightness turned up. Before I put the uh, 8.2 volt Zener in place of R2 with the brightness turned all the way up, I didn't get a spot at all or I got a very very quick decay. Now this is still a quick decay, but it's definitely more noticeable. Now just out of curiosity, I've gone ahead and put the 3.3 microfarad cap back in here. And I've left the resistor and Zener diode mod in place of R2. Just to see how it behaves in that configuration. So currently we have C22 returned to its original value of 3.3 microfarads and R2 has been replaced with the resistor and 8.2 volt Zener diode and we'll see if we get a spot. Brightness is turned all the way down. A very small spot. Let's try that again. A little delay and a quick fade out. And one more time with the brightness turned all the way up. And just in case you were wondering, yes, I'm discharging the CRT every time, even though I'm not getting a spark. Well, I hope it hasn't been too hard to follow along as to which mod was active at any given time. I have returned the board to the configuration that seemed to work best for me. Uh, R2 is back to its original value and C22 is 47 microfarads now. If you want to try to get rid of your spot, I would recommend replacing C22 first, and then if that doesn't work, try the uh, mod to R2. But regardless, 
of what you do, it's a good idea to replace R5 with a 2.2 to protect that Zener diode at CR7. And if you do both mods and you're still getting a leak, maybe replace CR7. I get everything hooked back up, and at this point, the only thing that's been changed is C22 and R5. Well, that's it for now. I want to thank Adrian and Frank for their work on this. I'll post links to their videos down below. Thanks for watching.